Hi, I'm Ben Wolford, and we're going to show you how to make a greenwood spoon. So we're going to show you how to turn this into this, just using hand tools. So we're going to start off with a piece of greenwood, ideally about 3 to 4 inches in diameter and about 12 inches long. This is a piece of field maple from a tree that blew down in, a, in the storms, but this is going to be perfect for our spoon carving. So first of all what we're going to do is we're going to split this log in half and we're going to make sure that we split it through the pith, the very centre, and we're going to split it into two equal halves through the pith like so. And the best tool for that is to use the axe. So once you've got your log prepared to the right length, we can put it on our chopping block, hold the axe that you're going to use in your non-dominant hand, place it through the pith, making sure you're going into those two equal halves again, and really importantly, make sure you stand to the side, because if that axe comes through, we want to make sure our leg's not directly in line with that, that axe. So stand to the side, and then you can use your dominant hand to strike a wooden mallet on the back of the axe. In half like that. So we've got our two halves of our log now. So in theory, we've got two spoon blanks there. You'll notice that you get a very defined pith running all the way down the piece. That means that it's run all the way down and you've got two nice equal halves. At this stage, have a look at the blanks. If you've got any major knots and things like that, maybe put that to one side and use the cleaner half. So I think we're going to start off with this piece. These are two Grand Swords axes. We've got the small forest axe at the back and the wildlife hatchet there. Just wanted to show you the pros and cons of the two tools. For close quarter work, for craft work, you can use the small forest axe, but there is a little bit of a danger that because you're going to be holding it close to the head, that this long handle can snag on your clothing and interfere with your body. So if you're not having to do any heavy chopping using a long handle, I prefer to use the little, little light wildlife hatchet like this with a much shorter handle for this controlled work. And we'll show you how to safely use this for the spoon preparation. So we're going to use the axe and we're going to hold it quite close to the head. That's going to give us a lot of control straight away. And what we want to try and do first of all is remove all this pith and flatten off that top surface. So the technique that we use is we again make sure that we stand in a safe section so that if I do miss the piece of wood and the block, my leg's not directly behind where the axe is going. So I'm standing in this safe quarter. We're going to tilt the piece of wood at a slight angle so that I'm not chopping at an angle with the axe, the wood is at the angle and I'm chopping straight down. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a series of nicks, we're going to throw the axe and put a series of notches in the wood and that will stop the axe getting stuck in the fibres. So we're only taking off a small piece at a time, just like so. And always make sure that when you're working with the axe, that you never work further than about two thirds of the way up. We've got to hold the piece of wood at this end, but if we come in from the top, there's a big danger of us cutting our hands. So work two thirds of the way up and then turn the blank over and proceed to the other end. So we'll just show you how I'd work. Plenty of those notches, plenty of those nicks. Slide down. See how those little notches really help remove those chunks of wood. Got rid of all the pith. Then we can just turn it over and do exactly the same again on the other end. So we've got rid of all the pith, we've flattened off that top surface and now we want to have a look at it and choose which end is going to be the bowl of our spoon and which is going to be the handle. Again if you see any knots try and put those into the handle rather than into the bowl. So at this moment I'm probably going to choose this end for the bowl and this is the handle. So at the moment we've got a dead street, straight piece of wood. We're going to now induce a curve into it by chopping and that's going to make a much more practical usable spoon. So we're going to chop in about a third of the way up and we're going to create a little crank in that end. So we'll start off again holding the axe quite close to the, the head. A series of chops, about a third of the way up and then chop down. So 
So we've created that crank on the bowl end. Now what we want to try and do is we want to try and offset the other end, the handle end. We're going to create like a, a sort of squashed Z. So what we'll do is we'll flip it over and this time we'll work two thirds of the way up and remove quite a wide section of timber there to crank the handle. So back to the chopping block again. Using that axe again close to the head for lots of control. Really important to put those series of nicks up the handle and then slice down. Probably see as I work, sometimes rather than just chopping straight down, I will just twist the axe and that will help break the fibers out. But take your time, you know, do a little bit of chopping and just assess where you're removing the timber. At the moment, it looks like I need to work a little bit further up towards the bowl. So I'll put a few more nicks in. Be very careful when you start to come close to where your fingers are. Ideally, the handle wants to be about sort of half an inch of thickness at this sort of early stage. So we've got the crank in it now. So you can really see that sort of cranked handle and the bowl. And at this stage, it really helps, especially when you're learning, to actually draw a shape on. So you can just draw a very crude center line down your piece of wood. It doesn't have to be super duper straight, just like that. But this will help when it comes to drawing the shape of the spoon on. So I'm not the best artist, but having that center line just helps me get it symmetrical. Again, we want to think about proportions. You want about a third for the bowl of the spoon, like so, and then about two thirds for the handle. Now, the problem area is always this area from the bowl into the stem. So don't make it too sharp an angle. A nice flowing curve will actually help carve the spoon and it'll help flow with the grain. And then we can come a little bit wider here for the handle. And we can always make it slightly shorter at the end. But that's just going to give me something to aim, aim at when I'm, when I'm chopping. So the first cuts we're going to make are going to be working in this direction with the bowl at the top and we're going to work off down the handle. This will make it a slight advantage because we can get rid of all this wood and the grain will be flowing in the right direction. So we'll place it slightly at the angle on the chopping block. With those nicks again, we can put a series of those nicks in all the way up. Careful when you get to the top for your fingers and for the bowl and the spoon. And you can slice down like this. Now it's entirely up to you how close you go to those pencil lines. It's always easy easier to take more material off rather than stick it back on. So take your time and that's probably as close as we can go there. Then we come a little bit higher up and work back towards that line. But be careful because if you've cut, drawn a very complex shape and you've got bits that stick out, you're going to have to work with the direction of the grain. So I'll turn it around, you won't be able to see the shape but I will. And we can do the same on the opposite side. So we've chopped down towards that handle now and the next thing we've got to do is we've got to try and remove some of this wood here. Now the danger if we start working back along here is that the split is going to run all the way with the grain and split the side of our spoon off. So there's two ways of doing this. One of the sort of the most common ways is to put a stop cut or a saw cut in there down to our line and that will stop the fibres running. Now you can use one of these little pull saws which are great for the job and very carefully watching your fingers and also watching your spoon we can start to saw down towards our pencil knot like so. Now be very careful that you don't saw too deep otherwise it's, it's all gone wrong even at that stage. If you want to you can even saw in at the angle that you've drawn on but that's slightly more tricky but even this stop cut will prevent the fibres from running too far.
So we've got the saw cut there, so we can now very carefully work back towards that stop cut. And we're not going to so much chop, but we're actually going to get the axe in there and then just pry the axe sideways like that, almost levering those fibres off. Okay, be really careful, we don't want that, sh that axe to slip right down into the next bit because there's going to be a split where we don't want it. So really carefully, really slowly, we can work back down towards that, that saw cut. So now we'll work back down the other way, being really careful of our fingers because they're really quite close to where we're working. So nice steady blows, and again almost try and lever that wood apart. blend the two cuts into one another. Just like that. So the other method of removing the material from there is to use a, a notch cut into your chopping block. Now what you can do with that notch is you can sit your spoon into that notch and then using your axe you can chop very carefully down towards your pencil line and the axe will hit the chopping block and that will prevent the axe from travelling too far. So we've done both sides and you can start to see the spoon appearing but we now need to remove material off the sides to get down to our pencil lines and also these corners. So I'll carefully work with the axe off the end of the spoon now, working towards my lines and then by tilting the spoon at an angle I can cut off those corners. It'll be slightly tougher to cut because you're effectively cutting through the end grain of it wood which is a little bit harder and if you're left with a little lump like that you can either use your pruning saw to trim it off or just progressively work with your axe towards your centre lines. You work a little bit from both sides otherwise it'll just split. So we've got our overall shape now and you can see we've got the natural curve in this direction for our bowl but because we've cut the ends off it's really quite square at this front end so we're now going to blend that back edge with a series of axe cuts again holding the spoon at a slight angle and working on both sides and sort of blending them all into one another just to create that that spoon shape so now what we want to try and do is we want to try and blend the back of the bowl into the stem and into the handle now you can do this at about a 45 degree angle on both sides and that will leave this sort of triangle, triangular section to the, the stem of the spoon. So we'll just work very carefully watching your fingers, chop down and blend it into your handle. So we've pretty much got the crude shape of the spoon there. We just wanted to talk a little bit about the sort of problem areas. So you've got to make sure that you don't make it too narrow at this section, the narrower that you take it, the deeper it needs to be, and the thinner you take it, the wider it needs to be, just purely for the strength. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with the axe, just blending the cuts, trying to take off a bit more of this bark, and then it will be ready for the knife work. So we've done the axe work on the spoon now, and we can start to think about the knife work. Now the knives we want to use for the whittling want to be at least three to four inches long and ideally with this sort of flat scandy grind to it rather than a conventional secondary bevel like on most hunting knives. The advantage of the flat grind is it's going to give you a lot of control when it comes to the whittling. So we're going to show you some of the grips for carving the spoon now and the first grip is what we call the forehand grip where we hold the knife in a classic manner place the bevel until it bites into the wood and we're going to crank it at a good angle so that we get a really effective slicing angle like so. What you want to try and do is keep your arm reasonably straight and push from the shoulder so you get a lot of power. So another good grip for removing lots of material from the spoon is a grip that we call the chest lever grip or the scissor grip. Now to do this effectively we change our grip from a forehand grip and we let the blade come round in our hand so the cutting edge is pointing back towards ourselves and then we cross the knife and the spoon over keeping it close to your chest elbows out and then what we're going to do is we're going to lift the knife till it engages a cut and then by pushing our shoulders back we're going to use our shoulder muscles to get a really long 
powerful cut. I prefer this grip because it's very controlled and the knife doesn't fly away from itself. You get a lot of safe control and a lot of safe power. So another good grip for controlled cuts for when you're trying to work down the side of the spoon and work into a line, get the profile right, is to actually use a grip where we use the thumb of our opposite hand to apply force and actually push the knife through the wood. So this is very controlled and you can get really nice long cuts just by pushing with your thumb. So we can slightly improve that grasp by still applying force with our thumb on the back edge of the knife but this time rather than just pushing straight we actually use it as a fulcrum and we actually lever the handle back towards our body and it works like a guillotine and you can get much more power with that. So a good grip for when you're working down the handle back towards the bowl of the spoon is to actually put the bowl or the end of the spoon into your chest like so, supporting it right at the end and then we're going to cut back towards ourselves now which everybody thinks is incredibly dangerous but so long as you're safe and you use a few safeties which is to keep your arms tight to your body angle the tip of the knife so it's pointing well away from you and then as you come to the end of the cut your arm and the handle of the knife just hit your body and prevent you cutting any further into the spoon or into your body so you can go really nice and carefully back towards yourself So a cut that we can use now for working across the end of the bowl is to use this grip where we're again cutting back towards ourselves. Now the classic error here is people always cut back in towards their thumb and that's real bad news. So when you are using that grasp you hook your thumb right round out of the way and then you're going to cut into this void where there is no flesh. You cut in between that thumb and the forefinger just like so. But you can get lots of power and work towards your line. Another grasp we can use for working back off the bowl and down into the stem this direction is again to hold it tight to your body but this time improve the grip by actually pushing on the back side of the blade with these fingers and it means that you can steer the blade through and round that curve. So with all those different grasps you can just refine the shape of the spoon and if you watch me working for a bit you can see how when I get to different areas of the spoon I swap over and I use different grasps so that I'm always working in the right direction with the grain but also that I'm always safe, I'm never going to cut myself. So we'll just refine that shape and then we'll be ready to hollow out the bowl of the spoon then. So we've refined the shape of the spoon and now it comes to the hollowing of the bowl. Now just before we get onto that we've chamfered the edge at a slight angle to make it slightly nicer to use and we've also marked a little pencil line all the way around leaving us about three or four mil. It's good when you're learning because it will just prevent you from working too close to the edges. Now the spoon knife we're going to use is one of our standard hook knives but when you're choosing a spoon knife try and get one that's not too big that's got no sharp point on the end and ideally is only single beveled and that will allow you to push on the back side of the knife itself. Now to start with we want to try and support the hook knife in a fairly open grip just holding it with our fingers and then we're going to work across the grain but the essential part is that we don't cut into our thumb. We keep our thumb tucked out of the way and then we can just work across the work making nice little cuts and see how we're not getting anywhere near our thumb. So as you, as you get deeper you might even want to use your fingers of the hand that's holding the spoon to actually apply a little bit of pressure like that just to give you a little bit of extra power and also steer the blade through the workpiece. You can if you want to as you get more proficient or you want to get a really smooth cut on the wood is to use a hook knife with the cutting edge on the opposite side so this has got the cutting edge away from us and then it allows us to push with our thumb and get a really smooth cut at the back side of the bowl of the spoon. 
So we've finished hollowing the spoon. We've kept checking the depth to make sure that we didn't go too thin. And then we've just refined a few of the edges. At this stage, it's still quite wet. You might want to let it dry for a couple of days and then you can go back over it again with the tools, take off any dirty hand marks and you'll get a much smoother finish on the dry wood. Once it's dry, you can spend a little bit of time putting in maybe a little bit of detailing in, putting your name on the back of it, doing some chip carving, maybe decorating the handle of the spoon. But at that stage, once it's dry, you can maybe oil it with some linseed oil and then it's ready to use. If you'd like any more information on spoon carving, the techniques that we've used, or the tools, please contact us through our website.